Uh, thanks to the witnesses for being here. Uh, Speaker Pro Tem Jones, uh, thank you for your leadership in the Georgia legislature. I know a little bit about Georgia. Both my kids were born there. I lived in Atlanta. I got a lot of family down in, in South Georgia. Uh, over the past several weeks, I've heard a number of reports. I've also heard uh, several comments today uh, that seems to me that we're not properly characterizing many of the aspects of uh, Senate Bill 202. Uh, what would you consider to be some of the more blatant mischaracterizations that you've heard today or that you've heard reported in the press? Well, thank you, uh, Senator Tillis. Well, it would take me quite a while to go through the ones today, but I'll just go through a few of the most recent ones. Uh, no ID is surrendered to vote absentee. The exact same voter ID requirements that are in law and have been in law to vote in person are now simply going to apply to absentee voting. Ms. Jones, uh, how does that, Ms. Jones, if I may, how, how does that work? Uh, you know, if, if you go to a, a poll location, they ask for an ID, you have a government issued ID or uh, I guess other acceptable forms of identification. How does that mechanically work in a uh, absentee process? Are they copied and submitted with a ballot? How does that work? No, sir. Uh, if, if one has a pen, uh, a ballpoint ink pen, and uh, you can take the number on your driver's license or the number on your free voter ID, or I might add, I would like to clarify, someone said a utility bill couldn't be used. You could use any one, if you do not have one of those two, which 97% of Georgians do, you can submit a copy of a utility bill, for example, one of the federally allowed forms of ID. This is not uh, a hardship. And So, um, Ms. John, I, I just want to be clear because I got a lot of other questions I want to ask you. Okay. So, when, when yeah. we hear people talking about an unreasonable requirement. Uh, in North Carolina, I think our driver's license uh, number is somewhere around eight or 10 digits. So you're saying That's provided right. that you have a writing instrument and you can write down 10 or 12 digits, let's say yours is a little bit longer, then you've satisfied the ID requirement on the absentee ballot? Yes, sir, that is, that is okay. true. Um, people said that, I think it was Ms. Abrams that said uh, she focused on the nine to five window uh, yeah. for voting. It sounds to me like in the law, that was more or less established as a, as a floor and that you provided the options for local boards of elections to do 12 hours, seven to seven voting. Is that correct? That is correct. We had 134 states that offered fewer hours than nine to five. And so it is expanding the number of hours available for early voting. How about uh, the assertion that was uh, mentioned by one of the other witnesses, I can't recall uh, who it was, that, uh, that said that uh, providing uh, water to your elderly parents or grandparents could get you in jail. Is that a part of this bill? Uh, no, sir. The, um, just as has been in long time current law and is in most states and probably your state, um, there is a protected distance that was frankly being gained and manipulated during the last two election cycles by activists and, and candidates handing out uh, items of value, sometimes with their logo on it. And this simply puts... Right. Uh, so it's, a, it's another mischaracterization. That, that's what I mean. Out. All this stuff that's is right. mischaracterization. It's, I, it's I, you mischaracterized. Know, I, can't, I think it's important to point out that in Georgia, you have uh, just under four weeks of early voting. Is that correct? We have three weeks of early voting, which okay. is quite expansive. Okay. And that includes Saturday and Sunday option. Is that correct? It, include, it mandates two Saturdays in Senate Bill 202, previously only one Saturday. And the option for Sunday voting. And two and two Sundays are absolutely available. And only provisions? state senator. Only sixteen counties utilize Sunday voting in twenty twenty. Yeah. But all one hundred and fifty nine counties are able to utilize it if they so choose. Is the provision for drop boxes uh, driven more by the logistics of where you can secure the drop drop box to prevent uh, tampering? What was the 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 uh, Yes, sir. said you went from 90 to 24 in, in Atlanta, Fulton County area. Uh, was that just based the, the on the numbers are somewhat where you could have secure different from drop that. boxes? I live in Fulton County and there will be sufficient drop boxes, but we never had drop boxes before 2020. 
Yeah. They were purely put in place by the election, state elections board out of social distancing concerns. Well, I certainly am optimistic we won't have social distancing concerns at the time of the next general election, but should we have them? The law also allows for uh, the state elections board to take them back to the way they were during the pandemic, which was outside of early voting locations. But for security reasons, we had drop boxes that were overflowing because they were not monitored. No one was watching the camera on them. This will make sure that every vote counts. Well, that, that seems rational to me. Mr. Chair, I, uh, I have to uh, associate myself with uh, Senator Lee's comment. You know, this has been a contentious hearing and these sorts of hearings can be. This committee uh, rightly has our uh, uh, members with our differences on it, but I, I really believe that we need to start getting the facts on some of this uh, uh, on, on some of the voting laws. I don't think setting the premise with Jim Crow 2021 is a particularly productive way to get people to talk about states like Delaware that's only currently are, are currently implementing early voting. Uh, states like North Carolina, we were first to cast ballots in the last election cycle. You could start casting your absentee ballot in September. Um, we do allow for weekend voting. We have a lot of early voting sites, and yet when I was Speaker of the House and the gentleman that pa went behind me have had those bills, even by members of this committee, being Jim Crow bills. And the fact of the matter is we've had increased participation among the African-American demographic and the minority demographic. Um, there does seem to be a number of states that I'm sure we'll never have a hearing on here. I think uh, Ms. Abrams even said they're behind the eight ball. I think they're right. I think if, if we had some of the restrictions that we see in other states and southern states, um, then we would be probably rightfully insulted, and yet they get a pass. Um, I hope that the people of Georgia and that the American people will get past some of the misinformation. The 361 bills has been referred to repeatedly in this hearing. If you look at it, I, for one thing, cleansing voter rolls to prevent dead people from voting is not a bad idea. And if you start decomposing, if the record's gonna be open, I'm gonna provide uh, something um, without objection that really breaks down these bills to say maybe some are going outside of the lanes, but not 361. These are games that are being played. I've got a, a, an article here that w without objection, I'd like to submit to where fundraising uh, on aspects of the Georgia bill that never made its way into law. I don't even know if there was a serious amendment ever considered. It looks like a lot of people are creating a lot of noise at the expense of identifying legitimate areas where we feel like voters don't have the right to vote. I believe in North Carolina characterizing my laws, a law that I ratified, a law that was passed by almost 70% vote in a majority Democrat state. In fact, Republicans are third behind unaffiliated. Almost 70% supporting voter ID laws and integrity laws. I think that the Georgia law has more to do with election integrity than voter suppression. And I hope that we can get to a point to find the real offenders, weed them out, but not necessarily have these circular discussions where I'm sure uh, fundraising emails will go out and people will be talking about protecting voter integrity, but they're not getting anything done. Uh, Speaker Pro Tem Jones and the rest of the witnesses, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you. Senator. Thanks for everyone uh, for participating in this. Yes, Jim Crow 2021 is a provocative.